Those who want to standing order number 53-1 to seek for a statement from the Standing Committee on Devolution and Intercommunal Relations concerning efforts by the Kakamega County Government through its assembly to anchor into law the office of the governor's spouse in total contravention, Mr. Speaker, of the Constitution, the County Government Act, and the legal advisory by the Attorney General. In the statement, the committee should, one, state the legal basis for anchoring in law the office of the governor's spouse through the Kakamega County Office of the Governor's Spouse Bill 2023. Two, cause the Auditor General to undertake an audit of the powers of the County Assembly of Kakamega to establish the purported office of the Governor's wife and process, processes used to create the said office. Three, prop the possible cases of abuse of this constitution and other laws by the county governors in creating unnecessary offices in an already bloated payroll. And finally, Mr. Speaker, state the extent of the implementation of the state law establishing the office of the governor's spouse in Kakamega County. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Crystal Asiga. Thank you, Speaker. I have two statements. May I start with either? Thank you. I rise pursuant to Standing Order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Roads, Transportation and Housing regarding the retesting of public service vehicles and commercial vehicle drivers upon expiry of their driving licenses. In the statement, the committee should explain the justification and criteria for retesting of holders of driving licenses with class endorsements B3, D1, D2, D3, C, C1, CE, and CD upon the expiry of the holder's license as communicated by the National Transport and Safety Authority on the 20th of June 2023, stating the associated fees, state the professional qualification requirements for individuals conducting the retests, state whether the proposed biometric licenses are obligatory, specifying which category of drivers would be required to obtain them and the cost associated with obt obtaining a biometric license, explaining the difference in cost, if any, and shed light on the extent to which represent re representatives of long distance drivers and conductors associations were involved in arriving at the decision by the NTSA to retest drivers holding the said dri driving licenses. And my second statement, is also pursuant to 53.1. And this is seeking a statement from the Standing Committee of Labor and Social Welfare regarding the unfair pr labor practices facing long distance drivers and conductors. In the statement, the committee should state measures in place to protect long distance drivers and conductors from exploitation by their employers through unfair labor practices and find out the extent of unfair labor practices against long distance drivers and conductors including but not limited to long working hours and poor wages, stating whether the minimum pay is in line with the regulation of wages, amendment, order number 2000 of 22, which sets minimum wages for heavy commercial drivers and medium-sized commercial, medium -sized, uh, commercial drivers. I thank you. Senator Mogene.
Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise uh, understanding order 53.1 uh, to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Labor and Social Welfare on the delayed payment of monies to the elderly persons under the Older Persons Cash Transfer Program. Mr. Speaker, sir, in the statement, the committee should state one, the reasons for the inordinate delay in payment of monies to the elderly under the older persons cash transfer program. Two, outline any measures put in place by the government to ensure timely disbursements of these funds to the elderly persons of this country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if you allow me, I have another statement. Proceed, Senator. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Speaker, sir, again under Standing Order 53, I seek request for statement on the state of roads in Yamira County. Mr. Speaker, sir, pursuant to Standing Order 53-1, I seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Roads and Transportation regarding the state of roads in the county of Nyamira. Mr. Speaker, sign the statement. The committee should, one, disclose the roads that have been approved for funding by the county government of Nyamira during the financial year 2019-2020 to 2020-2022, detailing the respective constituencies in which the said roads are located. Two, table a report on which of these roads have been completed as well as those currently under construction. Three, Mr. Speaker, disclose the funding allocated by Kenya Rural Roads Authority to Nyamira County covering financial years 2019-2020 to 2021-2022 and provide a breakdown of the budgetary allocations by the National Treasury per constituency. And finally, Mr. Speaker, sir, outline the plans, the plans the county government of Nyamira and the Kera have put in place to ensure that the roads in the county are in a passable state. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Signed by Okongo Mogeni, Senior Counsel, Senator for Nyamira. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Murango. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to request for a statement on management of talent in counties. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise pursuant to standing under 53.1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Labor and Social Service Welfare regarding management of talent in, talent in counties. In the statement, the committee should, one, outline plans in place by the national and county governments, if any, to provide infrastructural support and economic incentives for upcoming and established, art established artists in Kirinya County. Two, state whether there are plans by the county government of Kirinya to establish, to establish a recording studio, arts academy, or any other income generating project for artists in financial year 2023 and 2024. And three, update the Senate on progress made by the government in establishing the National Rights Registry, a central repository for collating details pertaining to ownership of various copyright works and the Kenya Copyrights Board, Kechobo. Senator James Morango, Senator for Kirinyaga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Edwin Sifuna. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise pursuant to Standing Order 53-1 to request for a statement from the Standing Committee on Labor and Social Welfare regarding the neglect of the families of the five freedom fighters who were imprisoned in Kapenguria, together with the founding father, the late Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, during the fight for the country's independence. In the statement, the committee should state the factors that contributed to the prolonged and disbursement of pensions and benefits to the families of the five freedom fighters, stating measures take, that can be taken to rectify this situation. Secondly, outline the steps being taken by the government to ensure that the distinguished contributions of the five freedom fighters are appropriately acknowledged and honored in line with the recognition bestowed upon their peers and colleagues who actively participated in the struggle for independence. Three, 
state the existing plans or initiatives aimed at identifying, indemnifying, or providing compensation to the families of the five freedom fighters, as well as other heroic individuals who endured financial hardships due to the prolonged absence of their primary providers during the fight for independence. And finally, explain why the principle of honoring those who heroically struggled to bring freedom and justice to our land, as espoused in the preamble to our constitution, has consistently been applied selectively and not on all freedom fighters. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Miraj. Any senator holding her brief, that statement is dropped. Next order. Statements pursuant to Standing Order 57-1, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise pursuant to Standing Order Number 57-1. Uh, to hereby present the business of the Senate for the week commencing uh, 18th of July 2023. As you are aware, Mr. Speaker, on Tuesday we passed a motion that the House will proceed on a recess at the rise of the House uh, later this afternoon and be back on the 18th of uh, July, uh, Mr. Speaker. Honorable uh, members, uh, this is to bring your attention that uh, today we conclude part three of the second session in accordance with the Senate calendar. This far, a total of 38 bills have been published. Out of these bills, 21 are pending conclusion in the Senate at various uh, stages. A total of 17 bills are at the second reading, while four are at the committee of the whole stage. The Senate has considered and passed six bills, two of which are awaiting assent by His Excellency the President, and one has already been assented to. Three are pending before the National Assembly. Honorable Senators, I take this opportunity to loud and thank all Senators for their dedication and commitment that they have shown in discharge of their mandate as legislators. Following the August 2017 general elections, at such a time as this, the Senate had published 28 bills which were pending at various stages. One bill had been assented to and six had been passed by the Senate and forwarded to the National Assembly. This shows great improvement at this time and I urge us to continue with the same spirit in service to the people who entrusted us to represent their interests in this House. Mr. Speaker, as indicated in today's order paper, at order number nine, ten, no, 8, 9, and 11, there are divisions at the second reading and committee of the whole stage. I urge our party whips uh, from both sides of the House to mobilize uh, the requisite number of senators for divisions to be undertaken. Following the passage by the National Assembly, of the County Allocation of Revenue Bill 2023. It is expected that the County Government Cash Disbursement Schedule will be introduced in the coming days for consideration by the Senate. I want to laud the Standing Committee on Finance and Budget for the timely consideration of critical financial instruments and tabling of the reports thereon and urge other committees to emulate this kind of uh, dedication. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I, with respect to motions, we have 22 motions that are pending before the Senate. I continue to urge the respective movers to be available in the chamber whenever uh, their motions are scheduled in the order paper. In terms of petitions, a total of 12 petitions are now due for reporting. As I indicated last week, uh, and we'll emphasize as for, uh, again, that there are four petitions which are due for reporting by the Standing Committees on Roads, uh, Transport and Housing, and I see the chairperson is in the House, uh, Mr. Speaker. I hope he takes note of that. Due for reporting means that the statutory 60-day uh, time frame within which we are to report uh, back to petitioners has lapsed. And therefore, we expect you, Senator Karungo, and your team uh, to actually con have report back to the House on the progress. I hope you will take advantage of the recess uh, to conclude on this business. Uh, three petitions are due for reporting by the Standing Committee on Justice, Legal Affairs, and Human Rights. Um, I don't see the chairperson, uh, but I'm sure members are there. Two petitions are due for reporting by the Standing Committee on Labor and Social Welfare. One petition is due for reporting by the Standing Committee on Education. 
One petition is due for reporting by the Standing Committee on Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries, and one petition is due for reporting by the Standing Committee on Land, Environment and Natural uh, Resources. I request the Standing Committee to expedite consideration of these petitions and table the reports as required by Standing Order number, 20, uh, number 238-2. Statements are increasingly being sought pursuant to Standing Order number 53 and others issues pursuant to Standing Order number 52. A total of 141 statements are pending uh, conclusion by the standing committees. I urge the respective committees to expedite consideration of the same and table reports uh, pursuant to standing orders. I urge and encourage chairpersons of the various standing committees to utilize standing order number 56-1 to present statements on matters for which committees are res responsible to appraise the House from time to time. Mr. Speaker, it's important for our chairpersons to note that uh, the provisions of standing order number 56-1 are available for their use to regularly update the House and colleague senators on the matters that they are cons actively considering uh, before the House, uh, Mr. Speaker, so that we do not have to wait and uh, question uh, them. With regards to questions, during the meeting of the SBC, held on 27th of June 2023, the committee maintained the same set of questions scheduled for Wednesday 28th June to be scheduled for Wednesday 19th of July 2023 upon resumption of the Senate from recess. This came as a result of the postponement of this uh, set of questions owing to uh, Wednesday 28th June 2023 being gazetted as a public holiday to celebrate Eid al Adha. Therefore, the Cabinet Secretary for education will appear before the Senate on Wednesday 19th, 2023 to respond to the following uh, to questions by the following Senators. Uh, Senator George Mbugwa on uh, PWD education needs. Uh, Senator Joyce Korir, Senator Peris Tobiko, one by Mariam Sheikh, Senator Gerard Gay, uh, a couple of questions and uh, Senator yeah, and Senator Gerard Gay as well. Finally, Mr. Speaker, in accordance with the Senate calendar, at the rise of the House today, the Senate will proceed on a two-week recess. Regular sittings of the Senate will resume on Tuesday, the 18th of July, 2023. Finally, on Tuesday, 18th, 2023, the SBC will consider and approve the business of the week. This will be business uh, that will not be concluded from today's order paper and any other business scheduled by the SBC. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and hereby lay the statement. Next order, clerk. Order number eight, the Agricultural and Livestock Extension Services Bill, Senate Bills number 12 of 2022, Division. That order is deferred. Next. Order number nine, the Startup Bill, Senate Bills number 14 of 2022, Second Reading Division. That order is also deferred. Next. Order number 10, Committee of the Whole, the Cotton Industry Development Bill, Senate Bills number 5 of 2023, Division. That order is also deferred. Next. Order number 11, Committee of the Whole, the Employment Amendment Bill, Senate Bills number 11 of 2022, Division. That order is deferred. Next. Order number 12, Committee of the Whole, the Learners with Disabilities Bill, Senate Bills number 4 of 2023. That order is also deferred. Next. Order number 13, the Mung Beans Bill, Senate Bills number 13 of 2022, second reading. Now, Honorable Senators, we we have deferred um, think about five five bills that are to proceed to division owing to lack of um, the requisite, requisite number of the delegations uh, this is the last day after this we go on recess for two weeks and I want to believe or rather, I want to urge both sides. Let us take this, um, this opportunity to reflect on the very 
reason why we, we, we are in this Senate. One of the key reasons why we are in this Senate is to make laws. I have looked at my list to see how many senators that I've released to travel, and there are very few. We actually have the numbers in this country as we speak, but these numbers are not in the chamber. And therefore, six bills that will have sailed through division, we have to defer till we come next at the end of the recess. So, honorable senators, this is your house. This is your business. Purpose to make sure that once we have a bill committed, we take it all the way to avoid clogging uh, the legislative calendar. I will call upon, we are going to resume business on the, on the Mang Beans Bill. And uh, I can see Senator Manzo Daniel. Yes, what is it? Yes, yes, very well. Mr. Uh, Speaker, uh, I want to thank you for that guidance. But the pain that I'm feeling as a whip, which is shared by my colleague on the other side, is that as soon as we adjourned on Tuesday, we started whipping and told members, come Thursday, which is today, they should be a, to vote. I've been whipping from 8 in the morning up to now. I'm very disappointed. I wish you could have a tool to make that communication of yours, Mr. Speaker, sir, more emphatic. Uh, it's very frustrating to be sitting here from 2.30 to 6.30 and allowing business to bend the way it is. And you can see the leadership of the House is leading by example. The leader of the majority is there, the leader of the minority there, all the leadership of the House is in the House today. So, Mr. Speaker, it goes beyond the House Business Committee. Uh, Senator Boni, before maybe I respond to that, let me allow uh, Senator Wambua to give us his wisdom in this matter. <laughs> I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I almost feel the pain expressed by Senator Alwale. But, but what he's asking for, in my very humble opinion, may not really be the way to go. I think, Mr. Speaker, the, the one thing that we must all appreciate is a statement that you have made. And this is personal to every senator. The decision to just commit to the cause of the Senate. It cannot, it cannot be whipped. It cannot be enforced through the speaker's rules. It has to be a personal commitment to the cause. And as a speaker, I want to implore myself and my colleagues and everyone who has any business in this Senate. Then, Mr. Speaker, we have an opportunity as a House to rise above the fray and to be that House where everything else, when everything else seems not to be working, then this should be the House of last resort by everyone to provide leadership, to provide guidance. The Speaker, as you have said, and I know I have also expressed the same to you, how beautiful would it have been if uh, Senator, my chairman, uh, Dangwa of Kiambu and all my colleagues in this house, if when we were going out today, we would have dispensed with six bills. And then we challenge, we challenge the National Assembly and tell them the ball is in your court. Push the bills to completion. Because at the end of the day, the Speaker, we, and I have heard uh, Senator Majority Leader read the statement. Quite, quite impressive business before us. If we can just conclude this business, then we will be remembered as that house 
that took their legislative uh, role a lot more seriously. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Senator Karungo. What say you? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I truly agree with you. We have to remember why we were voted for so that we are in this house. We discuss important issues, Mr. Speaker, but maybe I'm asking myself, uh, could this be the effect of having a holiday in between the week? Uh, you know, sometimes uh, it could be. Uh, I'm just asking myself, uh, Mr. Speaker. And also, Mr. Speaker, I try to raise the same issue, maybe not the way it was supposed to be raised uh, last, uh, uh, I think, on Monday. And I was told to withdraw and apologize. But I think uh, when we are here as a Senate, all we have to do is to understand why we were voted for. And it feels sad that six bills have to wait for another uh, few weeks before we get there. I think it also calls for the leadership of this House to invite us for what we call a kamukonji, so that at least uh, people can discuss some of the issues maybe they are not able to discuss on the floor of this House. So that when we come back, Mr. Speaker, we will be one voice, will be one Senate that is geared towards uh, fighting for the interests of our counties. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, let us not make this uh, an issue of debate. Yes, Senator Mazayo, what's your wisdom in this matter? Asante, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I feel hii sababu ya sisi kwenda livu kumekuwa na huu msemo kwamba kuna wengi wetu huwa hatuji ndani ya bunge na ni jambo la kusikitisha sana cha kwanza bwana speaker ni kwamba watu wanakuja ndani ya bunge wakati kutakuwa na aidha mswada ama mtu ameambiwa aje kwa sababu ya kitu fulani. Bwana speaker kama hiyo mwenendo kama huo utakuwa hautatusaidia sisi. Wewe ulichaguliwa na wananchi uje katika bunge la Senate uweze kutunga sheria zitakazosaidia na kutetea county uliyochaguliwa. Lakini ukiona hususan wale watu ambao walichaguliwa ndio hawaji katika bunge ni jambo la kusikitisha. Kwa hiyo nafikiria aliposema pengine yule ndugu yangu Kahungo ama Thangwa amesema kwamba ingekuwa vizuri tuwe na kamkunji na tuulizane maswali. Maswali ya kina, kiwaziwazi ya kwamba ni kwa sababu gani hili bunge letu haliwezi ku, kuonyesha kwamba kila mtu anataka kuja. Kuna wakati fulani wakati wa mwaka tatu na 14 na 15 hata bunge lililokuisha pia kama kiongozi wa leo wengi anaweza kukubaliana na mimi ya kwamba bunge lilikuwa likijaa likijaa sana lakini sasa kuna tofauti ya kwamba tokea tuanze hili bunge na nasikitika kusema kwamba ilikuwa mapema sana kwa sisi leo tunafikia karibu mwaka mzima tunafikia karibu, karibu na mwisho wa mwaka tunaona ya kwamba bunge bunge hili wakati hata ukiingia ndani utakuta ya kwamba sengine unaingia ndani ndio kengele inapigwa na hiyo si kawaida kawaida bunge uzuri ni kwamba sisi sote tuwe tutaingia hapa ndani tukae na alafu baadaye wewe ukiingia unakuta bunge limejaa lakini sio kuitwa na kengele kwa hiyo ninataka kuwauliza hawa uh, uh, ndugu zangu viranja kiranja aliye mbele kwa upande huo wa upinzani na kiranja pia aliye mbele kwa upande ule wa walio wengi bwana spika viranja wanatakana kujua kazi yao na kufanya kazi yao kisawa na mimi nawapatia kongole kwa sababu wanafanya hata kwa upande huu wetu wanafanya lakini sasa itabidi tuite kamkunji ili tuweze kuwapatia nguvu pia viranja ili kusema ya kwamba hai hili jambo liliongelewa katika katika kamkunji na sasa viranja wanafanya kazi zao maana mimi naona pia heshima inakuwa kidogo
Kwa hiyo hospika hili ni swala ambalo ni lazima sisi tulitafakari kisawa sawa. Asante. Senator Aaron you you pressed your card to contribute to the motion or to Please go ahead. Uh, thank you Mr. Speaker. Just a quick comment uh, is that all is not lost. We currently have 19 delegations uh, within the pressing, 17 in the house and two I'm told in the lounge. Maybe what I could ask of our whips is that if they try and raise another five senators we are good to go because we need only 24 delegations. Uh, I know that's a, a bit of a weird way of working but uh, we, we should do better, but what do we do in the circumstance? I, I, I sometimes ask myself what has changed, uh, Mr. Speaker, because of what the minority leader is saying. I am used to a very vibrant house that is full of debate. That's what the Senate is known for. In fact, many of our colleagues from the Assembly are always jealous of the Senate because of the opportunity to, to debate. Uh, but, Mr. Speaker, uh, maybe this break was needed, and we hope that in the course of uh, the break, People will re-energize and conclude all that they are normally rushing out of this house to go and transact, so that when it's time for Senate, you sit uh, from 2.30 to 6.30, uh, Mr. Speaker. I always remind people, Mr. Speaker, that uh, why do we forget so soon? During election season, people can kill and fight for a chance to come to this house. But then soon after they get a chance to be here, uh, they want to be elsewhere, not inside the house, which is rather weird, uh, Mr. Speaker. So I hope... Uh, Maybe in the next, we can proceed with the business that's ahead of us, but should our whips in the next maybe few minutes uh, raise the other five members that are needed, uh, we can always seek your indulgence, understanding order number one, Mr. Speaker, to revert back to the previous order and we conclude on it. I think it's very important business for us to proceed on recess without uh, uh, the concluding on that particular business. Uh, final, Mr. Speaker, I hope our two whips can also maybe... You need to, and I've always said this to my whip, and I say this to my brother Sifuna as well, that uh, keep a list so that as you come to the house, you know who's coming and who's not. Now we will just be ticking and saying, so and so, you had assured us you are coming to vote, and it will be easy to mobilize. But allow us, Mr. Speaker, to proceed. Then uh, should we get these five delegations that you are waiting for, we'd be good to go and we can revert back and come and conclude on that business. So that means that the people that are in, at least don't leave the prestings of uh, Parliament. Just be within. Uh, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, and thank you so much for your, for those who spoke. Thanks for your words of wisdom. I hope that, uh, as uh, Senator Wambua has said, it, it, it goes to the personal. It's a personal responsibility, really. Uh, having run a campaign and made promises that you're going to be the best representative of your county in the Senate and then you're nowhere where the real business of the Senate is called up, you're nowhere. I think it calls for personal responsibility. So I hope as you do your Kamkunji, uh, that is the message that you ought to, 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 to give to your uh, members. This is an area where the speaker has very little latitude, if any. You know, for me, I do not remember starting a session with a quorum, other than during the controversial uh, impeachment or list of committee members, uh, areas that are really not the key um, responsibilities of, of, of the Senate. So, members, it is your house. We had issue, I think there were mamas when we started, that uh, the panel was taking too long. Whoever uh, was sitting on the chair will take too long uh, in um, dispensing with uh, statements and all that. And I think we have now gone over that hurdle. Uh, we want to give critical, uh, we want to give more time to critical business, which are the bills. We have reached there. We are ready to move, and we don't have the numbers to do this. So I want to believe that uh, as we proceed uh, in today's um, uh, business, the two whips, if we can save these, these bills today, so that as we go and recess, at least we can you know, say something that in this session, we passed these bills. I think that would be a good record.
and a good um, uh, score for, for us as a Senate. Senator Manzo, kind of proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to contribute on this very important bill, the Mark uh, Beans Bill uh, 2022, brought by my brother, the Senator for Kitui, the Honorable Eno Kwambua. Mr. Speaker, the Mark Bean is the green grounds and also popularly known as Ndengo. Uh, Mr. Speaker, so that we may move with the Kenyans who are following this debate. Mr. Speaker, the Mark Bean is a plant which is very common in uh, the drier parts of the country, especially Makweni, Kitui, Kajado, uh, and many, many of the farming, you know, the coastal area, many of the farming uh, dry parts of the country. It is a very rich source of proteins uh, and uh, used by a lot of people as, as a food uh, and again also uh, as a soup uh, and uh, it can make quite a number of, uh, you know, food substances. In Makweni we have uh, a processing plant which was sponsored by World Bank uh, a while ago and this plant uh, is currently being reformed by the current county government so that it can be effective but the plant will not work well if farmers don't grow dengo and therefore the Ministry of Agriculture is, uh, is very very instrumental and unfortunately Madam Speaker the Agriculture Ministry which is devolved under the Constitution has not fully been devolved. Agriculture is a, a very main component of, um, of what we do. Uh, agriculture is a main honor or is a main activity Kenya carries on. And we have different climatic conditions and Dengu favors the drier parts or survives with little rainfall. And therefore, it is encouraged that this bill is very important so that farmers can now start growing this uh, rich source of protein uh, and uh, clearly is also exportable because it is uh, a very common legume and needed in many parts of the world as a source of protein and especially for people who are vegetarians. And uh, Madam Speaker, uh, there is a growing you know, practice by uh, many citizens of the world, uh, a lot of them are going vegetarian, owing to one time scarcity of meat, and secondly, uh, the uncertainty of meat, and owing to the treatment of animals uh, and the quality of meat. members order take your seats honorable members I now propose the question which is the taking into consideration the findings of the departmental committee on finance and national planning in its report on the vetting of a nominee for the appointment as a chairperson of the commission on revenue allocation